This is Swart. Hey, Amen. I should have brought my laptop. But all is good, amen. amen. You're going to be in some areas where you may not have that laptop. That's why we got to have it in our hearts too, right? Amen. 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 Would you read with me? Ephesians 2.10. Let's go. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. And which God has before ordained that we should what? Walk in them. Amen. Tell your neighbor you've been created for good works. See, a lot of times when we look at that, we never stop to think about how this is going to tie into our purpose. Because all of us were created for good works according to the purpose that's in us. Amen. You have a different purpose. I have a different purpose. You, but we all been created for great good works. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. And the title of the message is part two. Tell your neighbor, you need prayer partners in your life. See, this is part two. You need prayer partners in your life. And we saw last week the, the, the importance of having a prayer partners. And we took a look at um, some of the things that you know God has called you to do. You won't be able to pull it off without a prayer partner because we, we made it clear that the enemy is going to come against you with so many different uh, devices and so many different ways to try to, to beat that purpose out of you, so to speak, and to cause you to just give up on your purpose. And so I find it needful. Uh, we talked about the five different categories, and now we're on that you need prayer partners in your life, personal prayer partners in your life. And so uh, that we're on part two. Uh, prayer person, prayer partner. And I had us to go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Notice it said we are all what we are created in Christ Jesus for what? Good. For good works, right? And, and it said that we are God's masterpiece. And so if we are God's masterpiece, that means he's constantly chiseling things out of our lives that don't need to be there. But it's all for according to the purpose that God has placed within us. Amen. And so, but that purpose... That God has created us for, we'll never uh, fulfill it without faithful prayer partners. Can I get a, another king? He's got the comments on it. And so, Father, we um, the the thing I want us to see about this is that uh, in Ephesians two ten it tells us we've been created in Christ Jesus for good works, but you need prayer partners to help you to um, those good works to uh, to come to fruition in your life. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so, um, a prayer partner can be seen also, I'm going to take my time for this, as an intercessor. Intercessor. Amen. And when you have a personal prayer partner, they, um, they help you to reach your desired end, so to speak. Amen. Uh, and in order for that to take place, they, you have to let you, the person that is praying for you, you have to let them know about God's uh, purpose, the goals, and the plans, and the aspiration uh, for your life. And, and I couldn't just tell the sister here to pray for me, and she might not even know what God has called me to do. She might not, she might, she won't know how to pray for me if I don't communicate that to her, amen? She'll be just praying vague prayers, but we want the desired end in our life. Tell your neighbor, you want the desired end to be fulfilled in your life. And so if the desired end is going to be fulfilled in our life, we need to pray uh, more specific prayers based upon uh, the assignment that is upon our life. And I always have to say this more than one time. A lot of times when we talk about assignment, uh, you have to make sure that I'm not just talking about a ministry assignment. And as we read earlier, we all have a special purpose in the ministry of the kingdom of God. And some of us have purposes within the body of Christ. And some of us have purposes outside of the body of um, the body of Christ. When I say body of Christ, I mean secular world in a secular setting. And so often um, in the body of Christ, we think that if you're not operating in the church, you're not doing the, the will of God or the ministry of God. But according to your purpose, wherever God has called you, or whatever your assignment is, whether it's secular or spiritual, is 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 a blessing to the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? amen? And so you could be just say, for instance. Uh, if you're a doctor, we need doctors in the kingdom. 
So you have, the, as, a, as a doctor, if you're going to be a prayer partner for a doctor, you should be praying more perfectly for his will, for him to be the best doctor that he can be. Amen. Amen. If you're an engineer, see, I'm trying to make this more applicable for every facet or every phase of society, so nobody will just see it from just a spiritual perspective. And see, we're in the body of Christ. We have to get away from just, just seeing everything just spiritual only. Amen. Because God is trying to, to, to show us in the body of Christ. He needs us in every, he need Christians in every area of society working out for the kingdom. Can I get an amen? And so that's, that was one of the interesting things as you read the book of Acts. Remember it said in the book of Acts that, that they were a community of people where no one suffered lack. You remember that? When you read the book of Acts it say that the, the early Christians, none of them had lack. In other words, everything they needed was in the king. And they really didn't have to go to without outside the kingdom if they didn't have they didn't need to. Amen. So in the body of Christ in the kingdom of God, we every there should be Christians on every level, in the government, uh, in the in the physician field, every field of, in every facet of life, we God has placed and put positions, I mean placed and position Christians in all those different um, places and spheres of life and society. Can I get amen? I'm trying to make this plain so you can you can see that you need a prayer partner. You need a prayer partner. For instance, one of the nurses in here, we pray so fervently and we still pray for the nurse that is in. She can't make it all the time, but that's a part of her calling. So we have to, we prayed and we prayed and prayed that God would help her to be the, a safe nurse and help her to be the best nurse that she can be. And now also that God would open up doors for her as she's ministering and that is taking place. Amen. So who would have, a lot of time we don't think and see that our profession is a part of the kingdom. Am I making myself plain? And so even with that you need people praying for us. So she have personal prayer partners which is us and other prayer partners that are praying for her safety. Especially during the season of COVID. Amen. And so we, we, uh, we are trying to make it um, plain and clear so we can see that this thing is more than just inside the four walls. And so if you got prayer partners, the other thing you need to know, if you got a prayer partner, a personal prayer partner that is praying for you, write this down. 1 Peter 5, 7, it says what? Take all of your cares before the Lord and lead them there. And that's what a personal prayer partner does. They take your burden because when you, when people are praying for you, they're taking on your burdens. In other words, they see things in your life that need to be prayed for in order for what your assignment or the, the, the mission that God has you on to be what fulfilled. And so I, I wrote this down, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, take all your cares to the Lord because as a prayer partner, don't you don't need if you my prayer partner you don't need you don't need to burden yourself down with my burdens. You need to take it to the Lord. Hmm. See, take take my burdens and my needs to the Lord. Don't you take it upon your shoulders and become what ill. You don't don't become so involved with what I'm going through that you think you take the place of Jesus. That's what I'm saying. You need to take it to the Lord. Take them take my burdens, and my problems to the Lord, and do what? Leave them there. Say, so I see, just might say, I see pastor as my, per, my personal partner, I see he needs this. Well, don't become burdened with it. Take my burden to the Lord and leave it there. Because he cares for you. He can handle it. Amen. Because a lot of times when people begin to be your personal prayer partner, they, they, they get so caught up in, in praying for you that they begin to what, they, they, it burdens them. They can see things and they, they start taking on the burden. When they shouldn't take on the burden, they should take the burden to the Lord and leave it there. Can I get amen? Mm -hmm. amen? Amen? And so now the next thing as a prayer partner, let's go to James chapter 5, verses 16 and 18. Uh, you need a prayer partner that's going to pray consistently for you, but you also need a prayer partner, a personal prayer partner that is praying uh they're, they're hard out for you. In other words, they, they feel what you feel and, and they see what you're going through and they, they're taking it seriously. Everybody uh, that, that says they're praying for you, 
Uh, they just pray in general a lot of times, and they really not focus on what you, they should be praying. And that's why, as the person you're praying for, you need to they need to let you know and communicate to them what to pray about concerning your your, your assignment in God. Can I get an amen? Uh, let's go to Ephesians. I mean James chapter five. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the New Living. I'm gonna do the uh, I'm gonna do the King James. I'm gonna stick to the King James. James chapter five, verses uh, starting at sixteen. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And so as a prayer, a personal prayer partner, you want, I want, I want my, your prayers that you pray for me. I want them to be effective. I want them to get results. I need them to get results because I want to see what I want to be that at the end of my life, I want to be that masterpiece that God is working on and that it, that everything that y'all pray for me, y'all praying for me and I'm praying for me and you're helping it to come to what fruition. And so I want you to pray serious for me and you can never really pray seriously for a person if you um, are not serious yourself. And so in verse 17 said, he gives us an illustration, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years. So we're showing you that Elijah was a serious person. He had a serious prayer life. He had an intimate life with God. So you want prayer partners who are serious. You want them to have an intimate uh, relationship with God. Not that they're without sin, but they have what an intimate relationship with God. That they know God. That they don't know about, just know about God, but that they know God. Can I get a man? And if you have been choked, somebody has called you to be a personal prayer partner for them. This is it. This is information for you to become a what more effective prayer partner or prayer warrior for someone. Can I get a man? And then look at verse eighteen. It says, "And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit." And so, and then I like it. The other verse it says, uh, "The effective." Fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And he, when you pray fervently, you're praying uh, as if you were that person. See, prayer, personal prayer partners, when you're praying for somebody, you should pray as if you're that person. If you are in, in that place, what would you do? What would you want someone to pray for you? That's the way prayer partners. And see, and the other thing about a prayer partner, see, they're standing in the gap. I'm going to get to that later. They're standing in the gap for you. In other words, they're like a mediator for you. They're standing, they're sitting there in the middle praying for prayers for you to get your prayers through to God. Amen? So that you can get the inspired end. The, other, the, thing, the other thing you need to know about a prayer partner is that the prayer partner, uh, they must love God enough. To confess their sins if they sin. Because see, sin causes us to be out of fellowship with God. And I know a lot of people consider themselves prayer partners, but they don't take the sin in their lives serious. In other words, 1 John 1, 8 and 9, it tells us what that all men sin, but if we sin, we should confess our sins to God, and God is faithful and just. To forgive us of our sins and do what, y'all? Cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. And so as a prayer partner, uh, you, you should be constantly uh, examining yourself to see if there's any sin in your life so that you can confess that sin and um, give it uh, so that you can have the right, right relationship with God so that your prayers can be answered for the person that you're praying for. Amen? And because a lot of times people worried about if what they're praying is consistent with Scripture. You could be praying something that's consistent with Scripture, but if your heart is not right, God ain't hearing that. Let's go to Psalm 66, 18. And then we'll go to Psalm 19, 12, and 13. So we need what? As prayer partners, we need, a, a, we need to have a heart of righteousness, a heart of what? Humility. And we see a lot of times people... They'll, uh, they know they're in sin, but they won't do anything about it. Well, if you're a prayer partner, you need to um, take it serious. You need to take it serious about your relationship with God. Because when your relationship with God is serious, then you can help 
the person that you're praying for. A lot of times people wonder why their prayers are not being answered. And God is saying, I'm waiting on you to get your, what you, the, the sin you committed against me. I'm waiting on you to get that right. Mm. Not that we never sin, but God is serious about sin. And when we just keep on uh, sinning, uh, doing things, and we want to pray for somebody, then that hinders our relationship with God. And I'm not saying you can't go to heaven, but I'm saying it causes you to be out of fellowship with God. And as a prayer partner, you want to be in fellowship with God so that you can get your answer, your prayers answered for your, your uh, the person you're praying for. Look what Psalm 66, 18 says. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not do what? He will not hear me. That's talking about your prayer. So it's saying if I keep iniquity in my heart, in other words, if I know that there's some sin in my life that I need to confess, and I just do nothing about it and leave it there, God is saying, I can't hear you for that. You got to first get the sin right. You got to confess and get it out of your heart. Now we're back in the right fellowship. Now you don't open up yourself to be a blessing to the person that you're praying for. Can I get an amen? And so, you remember the Lord said, David is a man after my what? On heart. So in other words, we can learn something from David because David had a, a great relationship with God, but he had sin in his life too. But the one thing about David, he might have sinned more than Saul, but his heart was greater toward God than Saul. Saul could commit sin and he would never even go back to God about it. But David was concerned when he sinned. Can we get amen? amen? So a lot of times, see, a lot of times people think that it ain't about so much how much you sin. It's about what you do about the sin you're in. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, so David was a man after God. Well, let's go to Psalm 19 and 12 and 13. Let's look at how David prayed. Because he, he was a great intercessor. And he was a great prayer warrior. He knew how to pray. And he knew how to get answers from God. Because he was willing to always confess his sin, and he was willing to get rid of his sin, and he was willing to get it right before God. And I know I'm speaking to a lot of people who have volunteered to be prayer warriors for me and other people. This is about showing us how we got to stay clean before God. We got to stay in the right relationship with God if we're going to get our prayers answered. And I thank God for the many prayer partners that's praying for me. And this, this is a lesson for not only y'all, but it's, it, it, it builds me up and helps me to remind me to stay pure before you and always give your heart an example. Examine your heart to see if you're in the faith, like Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. We have to constantly be saying, Lord, if there are any areas in my life that I've sinned, Lord, reveal it to me so I can get it right. Because I want my prayers to stay open. I want to keep the, my prayers. When I pray, I want results. I want you, Lord, to hear me. Look what David said in Psalm 18, 12, and 13. Keep back. I'm sorry. Verse 12 says, who can understand his errors? So, so David's saying, look, a lot of times there's some things in your life you might not know is sin, but it's sin. When God can show it to you, right? Mm. And it says, cleanse thou me from what secret faults. There's some things that we have to clean up that nobody know about but you. But God keep prompting you in your, in your spirit by the Holy Spirit saying, you need to go and confess that. <laughs> you need to get that right with that person. You keep pushing it on the back burner. Mm. And you don't know that God is keep unctioning you to do that. So what? You, you can properly, you can be in right standing with him and right standing with the person that he might be prompting you to what get it right with. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 13. It says, Keep back thy servant also from what presumptuous sins. So David's praying, Lord, keep me back from presumptuous sins also. So you see how his heart is? He's always, he knows that he's a sinner because he said in, in Psalm 51. But he also knows that when he's sinned, he needs to ask God for what? Forgiveness. So that he can stay in right relationship with God. And so that he can remember he had a lot of people that were under him. And as a leader, he needed to keep his heart right for the sake of the kingdom. A lot of times we think that uh, the sin in our life don't affect everybody else, but it does it affect not only you, but it affects everybody else that God has assigned to you. So you can be a blessing in their life. Amen? Kind of like Adam, he thought when he ate from the tree of good and evil, he thought it was only about him and Eve. But look how all of us were born. We were born into what? 
sin because of him. He thought it was just about him and Eve, but it affected all of us. And that's the same way it is if we have a sin in our life as prayer partners. We need to know to get it right before God. Can I get amen? amen? And the word intercede, I want us to see this because as a prayer point partner, you really need to know what you're doing. Intercede, intercede is defined as, set this out, to intervene between parties with a view of reconciling differences. So if you're an inter so when you're a prayer partner, you're praying and interceding to, to reconcile differences that, that you might that, that you see that God might reveal to you. And the other part of the definition says um, to intervene to, to intervene, I'm gonna say it again, to intervene between parties with a, a view of reconciling differences. Uh, and it means you also to mediate, which means to come in between. I'm going to show you something about that in a minute. This is a good example of what Jesus means when he says what? Where two or more are gathered in my name, they're what? In the midst. And so now what I want us to see, I want you, we're going to go some scriptures real carefully. And then I'm going to put them back together. And I'm going to show you just how powerful you are as a prayer partner. And I pray that it will get your attention and I pray that it will cause us to be what more effective as uh, prayer partners. Um, so, not, so remember when Jesus said, where two or more gather in my name, I'm what? I'm in the midst. So that makes him a mediator. He's a perfect mediator. He's a mediator without sin, right? But also, he's not only the perfect, when he said, where two or more gather in my name, I'm in the midst. In other words, when you as a prayer partner, when you're praying for me or you're praying for somebody else, then you got the prayer partner praying for you. You got you praying for you. And we forget Jesus is praying for us. Advocate. Amen. Amen. He's our advocate. Let's go to Hebrews 7. We're going we're gonna to go over these scriptures and then I'm going to come back and just marry them together. And I'm going to show you something powerful in these scriptures that we didn't see before. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24 through 26. Hebrews chapter 7. Some things you have to take your time with, but when you get this revelation, it's going, it's going to bless your, your, your prayer life. And it's going to bless the way you see your prayer life. All right, remember now, in Matthew 18, if you write this down, you can write down Matthew 18 to 20. We're not going to go there, but I'm going to just quote it. This is where two or more gather in my name, I'm in the midst. Then he went on to say, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And so that means that he's a mediator. He's in the middle. And he's the perfect advocate. And so... An advocate in this day and time, an advocate for those of you who know about court, let's let's say an advocate can be, let's tell him he, that he's a defense attorney. I'm going somewhere with this. He's a what well, the advocate is a defense attorney. You got a defense attorney, you got a prosecuting attorney, amen. But I'm gonna show you these scriptures, I'm gonna bring it back together. So now Jesus is our perfect ad, uh, uh, mediator, but he's also our perfect lawyer. So you might be saying, Pastor, why do you need a lawyer? How do you, why do you need a lawyer when you're praying? Why do you need a lawyer in the spirit realm when you're praying? We're going to make that clear, amen. Uh, Hebrews 7, 24, look what it says. But this man, talking about Jesus, because he continueth liveth, liveth have an unchanging priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God. Talking about Jesus, by him seeing that what? He ever liveth to make intercession for us. And so what Hebrews 7.27 is telling us that Jesus, when he died and rose and resurrected and ascended, where is he at now? He's in heaven. And he's in heaven being an advocate for us. He's being a lawyer. I'm going to make it plain. You're going to say, well, well, how does this tie in with your prayers? How does this tie in with me as a prayer partner? How does this tie in with me just praying prayers? Tell your neighbor, you need an advocate. Yeah. You need a lawyer. You need a defense attorney. And you need the perfect one. You need the best one. How many of you here can raise your hand and know that you need a good lawyer when you go to court? See, the persecuting attorney, his job is to what? Make sure you get some time. 
make sure you get the, what 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 deserves you, what they think deserves you. Sometimes the stuff you don't deserve, right? So we got Jesus being the, the perfect mediator. He's coming in between. That's what a mediator does. Now, sometimes when you're a mediator, what can happen when you in a meet, a meet being a mediator between two people? They can turn on you. You can get they blows, right? Yes. Amen. Anybody ever been trying to break up a fight and get hit? So Jesus is a mediator. But he's a perfect mediator and he never sinned. So the devil can't hit him with no blows. The devil can't hit him with no sin. The devil can't bring up nothing against him. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. You're going to appreciate your prayers more. You're going to see why you need to pray prayers that are consistent with God's word. But Jesus said, I'm in the midst, right? He's the perfect intercessor. He's praying for you. He's the best defensive attorney you can get. He's the perfect mediator that you can get. He said, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Now, we got we to gotta write this down. When you get home, it's going to hit some of y'all when you get home. It's going to be greater revelation to you when you get home. Now, let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verses 1. 1 John chapter 2. Are y'all getting this? Just write it down. If When you get home and go over this again, it's going it's to hit you like a tunnel branch. It's going to be some revelation to you. Because when I was studying, I said, wow, I didn't see that before. We put all these scriptures together. 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. Alright, it says, My little children, these things I write unto you. This is the Apostle John talking to his spiritual sons and daughters. That you sin not. So, how many of us in here don't never sin? See, if you never sin, you don't need an advocate. If you never sin, then what? You don't need a mediator. Wow. So he said, now Jesus is the perfect mediator. He never sinned. He's the perfect lawyer. He never sinned. He never lost a case. So when you look for a defensive attorney, you look for the best, right? So Jesus is our best. He never lost a case. Amen. He always got results. He always wins. For my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate. They got the lawyer against an advocate is a lawyer. Jesus is our lawyer. With the Father Jesus Christ, he's what? He's a righteous one. So now, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. I'm making this, I'm, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing it home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home with it. I'm coming home with it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. So if we need a lawyer... Who is the person always coming against us? Always bringing up our sin. Always bringing up what we've done. He's called the accuser. Always bring, he's, like, he's always bringing you to court before Jesus. You done paid for some stuff. You done done your time or whatever. He's still, what, we have an accuser. Always what? Accusing us. Can I get a man? So now look what Revelation uh, twelve ten says about. Let's find out who that accuser is. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. He mad because he knows that he has but a short time. Verse 10. Back up to verse 10. That's a good verse. Yeah, they mean for that one, but that's a good one. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the who? Accuser of the brethren is cast down. So this scripture is saying in Revelation. There's going to be one day Satan going to be constantly, he, he won't have access to heaven again. He won't have access to come and what bring, bring charges against you. Amen. But he's accused of the brethren right now. See, a lot of people think that Satan is in hell, but he's not in hell. He's, the Bible says he's going to and fro throughout the earth looking for someone. <laughs> looking for somebody, right? Looking for somebody to what accuse. Looking for somebody to bring the court. Uh -huh. So he said, I got sin on this one here. 
Because he, he looking to put he, he looking for you for God to give you some time even send you to hell with him if possible. So he's always looking. He's always looking for a reason to get you. Now let's go back to Romans chapter 26. So Romans 26 through 8. We, we, we're going to make this plain today. I'm going to show you where I'm going with this. Romans chapter 8. We quote Romans chapter 28 all the time. We heard it in the song this morning, didn't we? About all things work out for our good. And so you say, well, how does this, how does this time with me as an intercessor, how does this time with me as a prayer, prayer warrior? I'm going to show you how it ties in with Jesus. I'm going to show you how it ties in with you. I'm going to show, it how, show you how it ties in with, with your prayer partner. Can I get amen? And that's why your prayer partner needs to know the word of God. Your prayer partner not only needs to know the word of God, but they need to stay in right standing with God. So that your prayers can get through. Amen. Now, now this verse here is going to make, it's going to open some eyes. Look what it said about the Holy Spirit. In Romans 8, 26, it says, likewise, the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. Who's doing the praying? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Um, as we ought to, but the Spirit himself maketh what? Intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So now we see the Holy Spirit is the perfect intercessor. Why is he the perfect intercessor? Because Jesus is where? In heaven. And the Holy Spirit, all he is, is the Spirit of Jesus praying for us in earth. Yes. Can I get an amen? Let me, let me give you a picture. Now picture yourself, let's see, picture Jesus in heaven. And he's coming to earth through the Holy Spirit <coughs> praying for us. The Holy Spirit and Jesus is the same person. The only difference why we call him the, the Spirit of Christ is because Christ is in heaven. And you are, we get it through his Spirit. So Holy Spirit is the perfect intercessor because he is Jesus. Are we getting this? And so now in verse 26 it says, And he, he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of, Christ, of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God. Y'all uh, don't get this. Verse 28 says, And we know. That all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are called according to what? They go purpose again. So here's the, here's, here's the scenario. Jesus Christ is the perfect mediator. The Holy Spirit is the perfect defense attorney because he is Jesus. So when he said, I am in the midst when two or more gather, I'm in the midst. You got the prayer partner. You even got yourself praying for you. And you got Jesus praying for you. <clears throat> I'm going somewhere with this. So now look at it like this here. So in other words, your prayers can't get messed up. Because Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, know how to pray for you perfectly. What needs to take place in your life. Because he is the perfect what? Defense attorney. Let me make it plain to you. Okay, now say this for here's an illustration. Say that you have gone to court and you have committed some sin. You're going to you, the prosecuting attorney bring you back to the courts. And you might have committed some sin. But by Jesus being the perfect defense attorney, because we know in, in Romans 8:26 it says the Holy Spirit helps you to pray. It helps you to pray the perfect will of the Father, right? So even though your prayer partner done prayed as perfect as they can, Jesus standing back like this here, he said, I'm in the midst. I'm listening to all your prayers, the prayers of the prayer partner, your prayers, and if you mess it up, I got it. I got this. In other words, when the devil try to say, hey, they didn't pray as perfect, I, the Holy Spirit saying, by me being the perfect defense attorney, I got this. Because you remember now, a defense attorney, he knows the, the vernacular of the court system. He knows how to say words. He knows how to word it just right for you to get you off, don't he? Mm -hmm. And that's what the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, that's what Jesus does through the Holy Spirit. When he said, I am in the midst, 
when you when y'all get through praying, Jesus, he looks at he looking at a heart. So for instance, you might say, Well, um, that brother, Lord, this is the, on your other side, somebody praying for you as a prayer partner, you say, Lord, I want I, I, just, I just want the pastor to, to be in your perfect will. He, he he messed up, and then the devil said, No, but he done messed up. He violated. And the Lord and the Lord can come in as the perfect defense attorney, knowing knowing how to word it. He can come before God Almighty and say, Lord, that's true what Satan is saying. They did commit a sin. But Lord, I'm going to come beside them as a defense attorney and as an advocate. Come on up here and pray. I'm going to come beside them. Move the illustration. Come on up. So if the devil think he got something on you, just say, I'm going to come. I'm going to say, Lord, come on up. I'm going to come beside, yeah, the devil, he might have failed. But by me being his defense attorney, your honor, God Almighty in heaven, I have a program that's going to help him. Sending him back to prison time after time is not going to help him. I have a program that can help him. That will help him get it right. Because your honor, you do desire us to one day be like Christ. And he'll never be like Christ until he learn how to be like Christ. And I have the perfect program to help him like Christ. That's all right. And then the judge will say, defense attorney, you're right. You got him. I can see where you're coming from. I'm going to help him. See, the defense attorney come on and say, I'm going to help him. I'm going to help him, your honor, so he won't come back. Because your honor, your system, is supposed to be a system of reform anyway. But nobody can be reformed without Jesus. Amen. The perfect Mediator and the perfect defense attorney. And so the judge will tell me, tell the Holy Spirit, you got a point. All right, Mr. Defense Attorney, I'm going to turn him over to you. Mm -hmm. If you can't do nothing with him, I got him. He'll be back in my court system. And Jesus is like, I know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you may be saved. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And God can see that's what a defense attorney, that's what Jesus does. See, our prayer partners, they try to do that, but they can't do it as perfect as the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, he, he takes the prayers of the prayer partner and your prayers, and he said, I'm in the midst. In other words, if they can't articulate to the judge, I can. Hmm. Can I get amen? amen? So your defense attorney... He can articulate to the judge like you can never do. Judges hear defense attorneys, don't they? Don't they? And so Jesus is the perfect mediator. He's the perfect defense attorney for us. He never sinned. He never lost a case. And so now every time you pray, you pray all, you pray your best as much as you know how. And realize that you got Jesus backing you. To make sure your prayers are right. Can we get amen? And see, it looks like this is another illustration. You make pray prayers. People, people in my family was praying for me. Lord, help him get straight. See, the person of prayer was, Lord, help him get straight. He, time and time again, he's, he's done fail and Lord, he just, uh, Lord, I just don't, it's going to have to be you, Lord. I, I just want to see my brother straight. And then the Holy Spirit does a prayer part and pray, but now the Holy Spirit says, okay, I'm partnered with you. I'm in the midst. Let me come in and show you how to pray more perfectly for your brother. Because the Bible said, what well, the Holy Spirit in, in Romans 8, 26, he prays. Groanings, which we cannot understand, Right? And the groanings that he's praying that we understand, that's fervent prayer that James was talking about. That's fervent prayers. Those are some serious prayers. Because a lot of times when we're praying, we say, Lord, I just want him in church. You're praying a prayer, and then the Holy Spirit says, Your Honor, Sister just prayed that he be in church. And then the, Jesus, as the Holy Spirit, the Holy Jesus is praying in heaven, like we say, interceding. And then the Holy Spirit comes and say, through Jesus, because Jesus and the Holy Spirit are saying, Holy Spirit, come before the judge. He said, Your Honor, her heart means well. She wants her brother in church. But the Holy Spirit said, I want more than that. 
I don't want him just in church. I want him walking in his purpose. <clears throat> you see how that works? She prayed as, as, as well as she knew how. But the, as you read Romans 8, 26 more and more, it says the Holy Spirit knows all things about our life. And everything about our life, when the Holy Spirit prays for us, he's always praying for our best mm. based upon what God's plan and purpose for our life. Because a lot of times we might just be praying that a person just come to church. But the Holy Spirit has the perfect advocate, which is the lawyer. When he takes the prayer, he'll take your prayers and then he'll say, Your Honor, her heart is right. But I, there's more in him than that. I don't just want, Your Honor, see what she's really trying to say, she wants you know, his perfect will to take place. And then the Holy Spirit said, for his, and for his perfect will to take place, I got to take him through some things. Because she might pray prayer, Lord, I don't let him go through that. No spirit said, no, he got to go through So things because if he didn't go through, he wouldn't know who I am. That's right. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't love me. He got to be tested. See, a lot of times when we're praying for people, we pray that all be well. But the Lord is seeing that they need to be pruned in certain areas. Because God said, I want the very best. And when I'm through with him, then he's going to look like Christ. Yes. Can I get Amen. So as prayer partners, don't be praying prayers that we don't go through. Pray that we go through the things God wants us to go through. So if you're a prayer partner and you're praying for somebody, say, Lord, help him to go through the things that you desire him to go through. Because sometimes we can go through some things as a prayer partner. Say, Lord, don't allow him to go through things that are not necessary for the pruning of his life. Great Amen. But because a lot of times we can be delayed by what? T taking some unnecessary, going through unnecessary trials and, and, and tribulations. Can I get amen? amen? Some of the things we put on ourselves. And so as your prayer partner, when you pray and when you don't pray as effectively, then the Holy Spirit comes in and pray more perfectly for That's you. Right. Right. Can I get amen? Amen. And now, but uh, last, I'm going to show you, uh, well, just for the sake of time, I'll, I'll leave it off. Right down Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verses 1 through 5. And we see in those scriptures that the Lord was telling, he, he was telling the Israelites why he left them in the desert for 40 years. He went on, he said, I, I want you to stay in here so that you will know that I'm God, basically. So you have faith. And then right around verse 6, he went on to tell them, he said, once y'all go through all this stuff, then you're going to walk into all the blessings I have for you. But you can't get the blessings until what? You go through until I get all of the dross and all of the impurities out of your life. And so that's why Jesus said when he prayed in John 17, he didn't pray that his disciples would be taken out of the world. He prayed that their faith would not fail. In one scripture, he prayed for Peter, that his faith would not fail. In other words, Jesus said, I want him to go through everything you want him to go through, God. And we know that when he went through, he became a great apostle. But Jesus showed us how to pray as a perfect intercessor. To pray that Peter would become that that he was that his faith would not fail. Amen. Amen. Now, last but not least, I've got a couple of scriptures for five minutes here. Apostle Paul, he needed prayer. Let's go to Philippians chapter one, verses nineteen and twenty. See, a lot of times when we mention the Apostle Paul, could y'all get those on the screen for me just for closing out? Uh, you can do new living if you want to. First, uh, Philippians chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. So a lot of times people think the great apostle Paul, you know, they think he didn't need prayers. But as we talked about last week, that we all need prayers. And apostle Paul would have never went through all of that stuff that he went through without prayer partners. Tell your neighbor, we all need prayer partners. All all need prayer prayer. Prayer. And not only that, see, when we see, just for the sake of time, um, we should pray. I pray for my prayer partners. You know why I pray? Because as we said earlier, as a mediator, you're going to get hit because you have aligned yourself with me. That's right. All right now. That's right. You're going to have challenges too. Ooh. Because as a prayer partner, when you started praying for a person because you're praying that my purpose be fulfilled then you're going to cause what spiritual attacks to come upon your life. Yes. 
Amen. You're going to cause, uh, I will cause spiritual attacks to come on your life just because you decided to pray for me. Especially if you know how to pray. Because prayer partners get results. And so I have to in turn pray just like Apostle Paul. He, he prayed for those two to pray for him. I'll be praying, Lord, I pray that they be strengthened. The ones that pray for me, Lord, I pray, Father, that you help them to go through uh, the demonic attacks that come against them mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, even financially. And I pray, Lord, that they'll hang in there because there's a reward for all prayer partners. God bless you for praying for people, um, assignments to come to pass. Look at Paul. Philippians 1.19, it says, Oh, there it is up on the board. For I know that as you pray for me. Now, now notice he was in jail. Remember? Now the perfect, remember I was telling you, Jesus is the perfect uh, intercessor through the Holy Spirit. He's a perfect mediator. So if if we pray and been a prayer partner, if we had a saw this, we probably been praying for him not to go to jail. But God would say, jail, even jail is a part of his purpose. We see it here. Look what he said. For I know that as you pray, I'm talking about, he talking to his prayer partners, the church, for me, and as the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, see, I'm praying for myself too. This will all turn out for what? My deliverance. So Paul said, you know, I'm in jail. But if y'all had a, been praying, you know, with your own mind, you, you would have been praying for me not to be here. But how many of you know that when he was in jail, he saved people too? When he was in, see, Paul, as a, see, when he was in jail, he was still preaching the gospel. A lot of people would have been mad at God. Well, God, why you put me here? <laughs> but he took advantage of every opportunity. Wherever he landed, he was, he was still preaching the gospel. How many of us be able to do that? You can't do that without the grace of God. You cannot do that without prayer partners emboldening you. Verse 20, look what it says. For I fully, New Living, um, you got it, Tori? Okay. Verse 20, look what Paul said. For I live in eager expectation and hope that I will never do anything that causes me shame, but that I will always be bold for Christ. He said, see, now a lot of times we just think Paul was bold on his own. There's a time that you're not bold as a preacher. There's a time you need to be praying for his prayer partners for boldness. If he, had, if he wanted them to pray for boldness, there was an opportunity for him not to be bold. He, there was times when he, had, he lacked courage too. Be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And that my life will always honor Christ. He didn't say that they don't kill me, but he said that whatever I do, that my life will always honor Christ. <clears throat> you see how prayer partners have to know the word of the Lord? Because sometimes, even as a prayer partner, God revealed to you some stuff you got to still say, Lord, I'm praying that they get through this. Tell them, Lord, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. You see, so that, that shows us that we really, as prayer partners, we, we have a long ways to go. To pray God's perfect will in people's life, sometimes it's hard, especially when we know what they're about to go through. But we have to say, nevertheless, Thy will be done, Lord. Your perfect will be done. What's the next part of that verse? Was that all of it? Uh, okay, it says, Whether I what? Live or die. Paul was saying, You know, y'all just keep praying. Keep praying that I be bold. Keep praying that I honor God with everything about my life. Let's look at another scripture where he was told him to pray for him. Ephesians 6. 19 and 20. Does this happen to anybody? Yeah. Because it's prayer. See, a lot of times it's the, the, the sermons are not always just charged up, but it's instructional because prayer partners are mighty in the kingdom of God. You have a powerful role as prayer partners for things to happen in the earth. Remember, y'all know it was because of prayer partners that Jesus came on the earth? Yeah. Prayer partners, they pray and they cause the will of God to take place on earth. Mm. As prayer partners, you're in a powerful position. 
You're in a powerful position to receive revelation from God, to pray more perfectly. Because the more, as a prayer partner, I'm finding out the more, as a prayer partner, that I'm praying for people, the Holy Spirit teach me how to pray more perfectly so He can just be in the midst. Like He said, where two or more gather in my name, I'm in the midst. And the more we learn how to pray more perfectly, He's, he's like, I don't need to touch this. You don't need a lawyer for this. You learn it. You know, you're learning the Word. That's why I learned to pray people's, you know, through, through the Holy Spirit giving me revelation that He's an intercessor. That's how I learned how to pray more perfectly. I stopped praying that people won't go through but that they will go through what God wanted to go through. Amen? Amen. Philippians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. I'm just going to rush it up a little bit. Um, look what it says in verse 19. No, in 18, verse 18. I'm going to do verse 18. Look at verse 18. Notice now, because some people, they don't believe in praying in the Spirit. In other words, God gave, gave you a prayer language. I have a prayer language. that you've been through the Holy Spirit... Evidence speaking tongues, you have a prayer language, but God also called praying in the Spirit when God just come over you with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit tell you what to pray. That's another type of praying in the Spirit. Amen? Look at verse 18, it says, he's telling them how to pray. Pray in the Spirit at how many times? All times. And on every occasion, stay alert. And be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. See, as a prayer partner, you got to always, my cousin was telling last week, she liked the word I used, be on call. As prayer partners, you got to always be on call. It's just like, you know, you're on call. And God can tell you to just stop and pray for your person that you have become a prayer partner. But he'll tell you to stop and pray. It could be any time of the day. But he's telling us here to to be alert, be persistent. Why would he have to tell us to be persistent as prayer partners? Because sometimes you praying and sound like you feel like your your prayers ain't going nowhere. But then Daniel gave us the answer to that in Daniel ten. He said, "When we pray, a lot of times our prayers are held up in the heavens by demonic forces trying to prevent them from coming to earth." Mm. That's why he said you have to stay persistent. Don't give up on your prayers. Tell your neighbor, don't give up on your prayers. Don't give up on your prayers. So he said, be persistent. In your prayers for all believers everywhere. He's given prayer partners instructions. Verse 19 says, and here you go again, and pray for me to ask God to give me what the right words. See, the Bible tells us also that in order to win the, the loss, you have to have wisdom, right? You can't witness to everybody the same way. So Paul is praying for wisdom. And he's praying that that when I'm put in difficult situations that I speak. The right words. So I can boldly, they're going to work bold, boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. And he went on to say, I am in chains, he's still in jail. Now, still preaching this message, he said, I'm still preaching this message. As God's ambassador, so pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Notice he's praying for deliverance. He says, praying that, Lord, keep me bold. Keep me speaking boldly. So I'm praying for my intercessors too. Pray that I will go through everything that God wants me to go through without getting out. Because a lot of times, if you pray for somebody to come out of what God has them in, then they are not perfected the way God wants them to be perfected. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? And so sometimes when we pray that, uh, God will take people out. We should be praying that God will take them through. It's kind of like in the natural, you know, you get instructions that tell you how to cook cornbread. It tells you to turn the oven on 350 degrees for 45 minutes and you take it out in 20 minutes, it's half done. So the cornbread has not finished its course, right? And that's the same way it is with us a lot of times when we're not praying the way God wants to pray, praying that we get out of something. And God is trying to teach us and cause us to be more uh, perfected in what he's trying to do for us. And then we, we mess up. That's prayer partners. Can I get amen? amen? And last but not least, I'm going to quote it in, in Colossians 4. If you write this down, Colossians 4, 2 to 3. He told them, he said, pray that a, a door would be open for me to preach the gospel. Pray that God open doors, and I we should pray that as prayer one. We should constantly be praying. I don't know what you, I don't know what God has called you to do. I don't know what God has called you to do. 
But I'm always praying that God will open up doors of opportunity for you to do whatever he has called you to do. Amen. Can we get amen? Let us stand to our feet. Were well, y'all blessed today? Amen. amen.